but there's a spirit of unthankfulness and getting more and worrying about whether I'm going to have enough money to buy prison for everybody. And then on the top of that, we end this here thing about, you know, job layoffs. Some people still have their jobs, but they've been asked to cut back on the hours so they can, amen. Everybody in America is worried about, the rich people are more concerned about whether or not you're going to spend enough money according to the Bible of the Santa Claus. That spirit of get more and to give to everybody but God's house brings not joy to the world that the Lord is come. Because the only way you're going to have joy at Christmas time to be reminded of the joy of the world, the Lord is come, not that Santa Claus is coming. And what I'm trying to say, we need to learn to rebuke the spirit of the world. Because the spirit of the world only, y'all listen to me. I need to preach on a lot of things. But some of y'all, when you get sad and feel bad and depressed because it's Christmas time and I don't have the money that I would like to have. I wish I had $2,000 to buy all my friends some good presents. If your friends have to have $2,000 and then if you give them a $500 TV and this and a uh, $400 DVD, come on in, and then you get nothing but a handkerchief or a card, hey, you don't even believe that it's better to give than to receive. And then if you go, everybody think about how much money I can spend for Christmas, and we have to beg to get extra money to balance the budget, amen. Because, you know, we, you know how many know that, it, you know, it, tax time coming up. It's no strain. I know some of the young people look at me, but y'all might as get ready. Ain't the use y'all think y'all get married talking about why do y'all talking about money? And when you get married, if you don't sit down and be able to talk about money and find out what the bills are, too many people get married and then three months later talking about, I thought we would have more. Did nobody give you an increase in salary because you got married? Amen. Get ready to be grown. Grown is more than now you can have a permissive legal role in the hay whenever you want it. It's debt. Mm, it's more bills. Hey, you just been mad a few months, a few years. Hey, you have not begun to. Y'all ain't hearing me. Because I know you want better furniture one of these years. Uh, the house going to need roofing uh, one of these days. Uh, your washing machine and dryer going to conk out one of these days. You're going to have to trade cars. Hey, Amen. Come on. You're going to have to put some carpet down, some tile down. You're going to have to improve. You're going to have to get it painted. You're going to have to do uh, the sewer. Something going to stop up. You're going to have to get some stuff replaced. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Yeah. Yeah. Look what somebody say. Just a reality check. Yeah. And God is upset at you. When these things come in, you, still, you stop. Act like he done you wrong. Yeah, all right. They're going to read the scriptures for you. Main standing while they read, call the scriptures. Amen. We've been reading from 1 Peter 4.12, Matthew 20.20, 20, and 2 Timothy 3.12 Get those scriptures ready. 1 Peter 4.12 Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering that when his glory shall be revealed ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. 2 Timothy 3 and 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Matthew 20 and 20. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. Matthew 20, 21. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She said unto him, 
Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on the left, in thy kingdom. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup I am going to drink? We can, they answered. May the Lord have a blessing to his red word. I'm hoping that at the end uh, of this sermon, that's significant that the young man read that. And I tried to preach on several levels. There's a level in the preaching. There's some verses that the theologians, that the ministers, that the deacons and deaconesses, that the officers, that the choir members, people who actually realize that you are workers and pillars of the church. How many know them without a license, that without the choir, amen, amen, that, uh, you know, we couldn't have, it was not about music, God made it that way, you, couldn't, you can't have church. Now, you might have a service coming out now, but after a while, and even the other people realized, the other people realized, we got to get some music. People that didn't believe in nothing but a pipe organ turned down real soft everywhere decided we better get some guitars in here. We better get some drums in here. I, 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 I know it. I ain't got you to raise your hand. I mean, oh, at Methodist churches, Episcopalian churches, Catholic churches, uh, uh, I ain't going to say dead churches, but uh, uh, Lutheran churches. Uh, I mean, but quiet uh, uh, churches that their text is, Shh, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth. Let me hear a pin drop in here. Let me hear the fiber optics test. Quiet. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence. Now that it's quiet. No creature is stirring, not even a mouse. Now we have been completely reverent, just like God wants it, because God is old and he's nervous and He's like your grandparents, and he can't stand a lot of noise. And anyway, he's not hard of hearing, so you don't need to yell and keep the music down soft. No, no guitar in here because you play too loud. No drums because that's jungle music. No, no one here. But then there are verses in the Bible that said, let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Now, I don't care. Come on. Everybody just do this. Just, just do this. Just. No, no, wait, no, wait, no, no. Just real. No, real. Come on. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Clap your hands, all your people. I mean, I mean, you clap. So that's proper, huh? Well, how come you don't do like that when the when the Broncos, when the Panthers, when the Dallas, how come when the ration match at, at, at the Reynolds, at, when the demons, <laughs> ain't talking about no, I mean when the real demons, you know, and the, and the, and the yellow jackets, you know, how come you don't, how come you don't, when they score a touchdown, don't talk about, let's do like the Bible, man, you shouldn't have to put in there, what they know, could have to put the music in, let's clap your hands, all you people. That everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Somebody say, glory. glory. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, hey. Mm. Mm. Ah, Jesus, I feel better. I mean, no, it does something to you. If it does something to you to be in a crowd, and if it does something to you when you go someplace, ain't got nothing to do with church, and the people get excited around and make you feel better, why is it that you don't think that somebody other than the choir need to make some noise? Somebody is depressed. 
Somebody been going through. Somebody been crying. Somebody is sad. Somebody has heartache. Somebody has disappointment. Somebody needs a lift in here. Somebody needs some. So why don't somebody help make somebody happy? <laughs> call it in, call it in, call it in, call it in. You go to the world to come and have a good time. How many know somebody came here because they need a good time in Zion? Somebody came here because they need a shout. They need, they need. They need something to make it through the night. They, things ain't right. Things are tight. Money's tight. Job layoff threatening. Children acting crazy. Wife don't understand. Husband can't stand it. Come on here now. Trouble everywhere you go. Somebody need, came here for a lift. You didn't come here just to give your money. You could have mailed it in. That's what it's for. You didn't come here to socialize. You can call on the telephone. Came here to meet Jesus. Came here to tell Jesus, help me out. Oh, yeah. See, in church, the Samaritan woman can come to the house of God. And when Jesus gets through with her, she can turn out to be, the alley cat can turn out to be an evangelist. Y'all ain't hearing me. The woman that's been bleeding for 13, 12 years can come and just touch the hem of his garment. That's what the communion is all about, touching Jesus. So you can come in here and you can say, oh, I leave, I feel better now. I laid my burden down. Oh, 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 somebody touch me. It must have been the hand of the Lord. Look at the Bible say, oh, oh, somebody touch me. Mm. I mean, know that God can be so real that he can just pat you on the shoulder and you look around and don't see nobody, but that pat made you feel so much better. Ah, that's sad. No, no, son, no. Oh, Jesus. Someone was talking Sunday night. I'm telling you that. that uh, do some more. I'm telling you that young man named Mitchell Goldfinger. And the young people came out so good. And I'm hoping that tonight, I know the choir has to be. We just ain't going to do it. We just ain't going to do it. I take my vitamins. It <laughs> don't help that much. I don't know what I'd be if I didn't take them, but I tell you, don't make me feel like I'm 25. If I feel like I'm 25, I got to another. I better not try to act like I'm 25. I better be just thank the Lord and act like I'm 75. Don't act because I feel and don't mean nothing. Mess up going by what you feel. You mess up. You know, next thing you feel ain't going to be good. And it too, take you two weeks to recover. Y'all y'all crazy. I'm going to do telling a lie. I can do what I used to do when I was 25 and you 55. You a lie. I've been 55, now I'm 75. Don't go trying to run nothing on me. It was read in your hearing. I'm going to talk about expect the unexpected. We have too many people who feel like that they, the church and the Bible and God should change with the generational thinking. I want things right now. I want the American dream. I want everything that I have to face. I want to find instant help if it's my bank account. And they're asking the church uh, because they found out that in the stock market uh, and in mutual funds and in saving accounts, uh, Banks that used to give 6% and 7 and 8% and mutual funds that used to give 10 and 12%, all of a sudden they dropped down to 6%. And banks that were giving 3%, talking about I give you a half a cent, a penny, half a penny for, you know, interest and, 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 and getting statements. And, 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 but they said, but I want, that disturbs me. And I can't go to these financial seminars and get it because Millionaires are having problems. How many know there's a big company that begins with an E? Uh, the, the one that had bought the tape last year and for years, they were the biggest sellers and buyers of oil and gasoline and things like that. And they, Intron or something like that, Intron, Intron, help me, huh? Enron. 
and the great, and now it's all over the paper because see if they fold I mean people that have billions and then how many read I mean that they're talking that here is RJ I need some, I, I need some money from y'all uh, RJ is I ain't talking about it RJ Reynolds is talking about trying to buy out somebody else and uh, they bid 320 million and somebody else bid 350 million and they wonder whether or not they're going to get it in it amen but you see if big companies are being bought out anytime you worth so many millions and somebody is vying whether or not they got over 300 million enough to buy you out which means you out of bid that means that you offer bid and then if you're going to not exist because in spite of being worth that much, it looks like you're going to have to sell out to somebody else and just live on what you have made, that means somebody's in trouble. Now, people come to the church and expect the church to give them no problems. People come to God's house and look at Christianity and complain about trouble in my way. I had to cry all the time. I'm catching hell on the job. I'm catching hell in the home. I'm catching hell with my bill. But I want the church. I want the church to have seminars and teach me how to make money. And I want the church to teach me how I can pray and not have to suffer nothing. I'm having trouble in my marriage, and I want the church I, 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 to get up marriage counseling and help me so that I can come to them six times and I can go back home and my marriage is instantly repaired. I want you to repair my marriage like when I have a flat tire. I can go and they tell and 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 put me in there. Plug a plug in there and then pump it up and keep on rolling. I want, I, I, my, my, my money is messed up because I'm the one that messed it up. But I want you to tell me, tell me something. Tell me if I give enough tithes and offering, I will be super rich. And then tell me how to pray so that the devil don't hear what I'm saying. Because I heard that the devil hear what you're saying and he will, and he, and he, he'll stop you. But see, you don't realize that I don't understand how people think that they can ask the Lord for something in a tongue that the devil don't hear. And then if you testify, oh, you should testify. Uh, you should testify. You should testify about the goodness of the Lord. You should testify that he's good and in order to be a testimony you need to hear that they wasn't saying I'll come on that Sunday but you need they need to hear in English that God has blessed me as you can plainly see the devil did appear he did come to steal kill and destroy but you can plainly see I told him speak to the hand I told him get behind me if you ain't gonna get behind me, I'm gonna kick you to the curb you need to testify in English. Now, when you testify about the goodness of the Lord, and I'm going, I'm going through, but I'm going on anyhow, the devil, how many know that the devil gets upset anyhow? What I'm trying to get you to see, it don't do no good. If it was true, it does no good just to ask the Lord for things in a language that you say, I don't agree with that, we ain't gonna bother that right now, that you say, you speak so the devil won't hear what you're asking for. But when, if that were true, when you receive the blessing of the Lord, you don't need to say, thank you, Jesus, in no tongue. Some, the Bible says faith comes by hearing. I mean, no, somebody needs to hear. I mean, somebody needs to hear you say, glory, hallelujah, I'm happy now. Look what the Lord has done. I'm trying to get you to see that people don't realize they need to expect the unexpected. Now, I'm just going to try to deal with three things, and I'm going to deal principally with what Peter said. And notice that he said it near the end. I want you to notice that there is no way the Bible says he 
Look at somebody and say, he, the Bible says, he that would, he that would. just, just going to make it in mind, live righteous, live must, must. Uh -oh, suffer, suffer. Persecution. persecution. That means that when you decide, I'm going to church, I'm going to change my way. I've been in church all this time, but I haven't been dedicated and I haven't been committed. I've just been playing around. I've just been singing and ringing. I just been singing, ringing, and flinging. You know, you know, you know, and uh, and uh, as I get through singing, then I go to flinging. I go, you know, and because I'm singing, I go to flinging. And some of them are married, but I need something on the side, so I go sing and fling. Uh, and and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and I, I pray, but then I got to play, you know. Uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, but uh, and then especially, this is teenage stuff, living for Jesus so hard. Well, I can understand teenagers saying that. But people that have gone through with the Lord, now what you, I'm trying to get you to see that you will not have no testimony till you have a test. You will not know of the goodness of the Lord. You will not have strong faith. Your faith will not grow until it's been planted. Then every time I see something planted, it's in dirt. Now I know they got a few little things that you put in the water and just grow in the water, but there's dirt down there because that fish He's eating the dirt off it. Amen. I don't know, and I don't think you want to drink that water. Most of the things, amen, if the water is clear, it's still got calcium and minerals in it. So that's dirt. Amen. I'm trying to get you to see that your faith must be planted. It must mature. I understand the Bible. You know, let, me, let me tell you this here. He said, my sheep hear my voice, but the lambs don't know it. I did the sheep, the Jesus said, Notice how accurate said, my sheep hear my voice. Now, all y'all not sheep. Show me y'all little lamb. Lost, oh, you little lamb, how'd it go? Lost in the way, bad, 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 cry, cry, cry. Not a sheep yet. I'm a little lamb that has lost my way. Bad, bad, <laughs> But the sheep. Say, I hear the master calling. The sheep say, he, the Lord is my shepherd. The sheep say, he will lead me beside the still waters. The sheep say, I'm not worried. He will pat me on my head and tell me to lie down by still waters. Sheep are scared of rushing water. So the sheep say, that's all right. The stream is rushing. If I get, I'm afraid to get my feet wet because sheep have all this lambing in the wool and they'll get in the water and absorb all that water and they will drown. They can't swim good with all that weight on it. They're very absorbent. And so he's going to leave. Say, that's all right. I, I can't drink from that water. But the shepherd going to come and say, over here where the still water. And then after I get through eating and feeding in the hot sun, I can't stand there. I'm not going to eat all day. I need to lie down and have a siesta. I need to lie down and digest my food. And after a while, the sheep know that the shepherd will say, come on over here under this shade tree and just lie down. The sun is hot out there and fold your little legs up on you and just lie down and rest. And in a couple of hours, I'm going to tell you to get up and we're going to go eat some more. And then we're going into the pen. Amen. Or if we stay out here, I'm going to lead you someplace else. I'm going to tell you to lie down for the night. And I'm going to stand there all night for thy rod and thy staff. They watch over me. So all night long, we little sheep, we going to sleep. But the shepherd going to stay awake all night. And if a wolf or a lion or a bear comes up, the sheep know that. The lambs get scared. How many say, how many can say, now don't everybody say, how many say I'm a sheep? All y'all lambs in there, how many can say I'm a sheep? How many can say I'm a lamb? Okay, I forgot. How many say you're billy goats? I mean, <laughs> y'all don't want to be nothing. All right. Expect the unexpected. I'm just going to read something from Sunday translation. I ain't bothering y'all this morning. The Bible says, Beloved, think it not strange. Peter was a bad boy. I believe he was the tallest and the biggest. He was ready to go on any of those teams and be a linebacker or 
offensive team and be a fullback. But the Lord converted this cursing, braggadocious leader of the pack. And here he is in his latter years saying, Beloved, think it not strange. One says, Do not be bewildered. Another translation says, I beg you not to be unduly alarmed. Can I help you out here? Another says, do not be surprised. Another says, don't be astonished. So here we are doing the don'ts. Beloved, now that's a nice word. That means I love you. I don't understand how that we feel like that anybody in the hood that said, in the neighborhood that says your friend, or anybody in your class, or anybody in your job, they're your automatic friends and they won't give you a nickel for a pickle. You go, if you get in trouble and go to jail, they will not come to see you, they will not write you. If you get in trouble in the office, they will say, I don't know nothing about it. If you get shot, they will stand tall. I didn't see nothing. Don't know nothing. Come on here. Come on here. Nothing. That's right. That's right. I don't understand how it does not mean something when we say, look here. Why are you looking at the way I look? I'm not up here to run no beauty contest. Why? He's t he is mean. He talks mean. Do you think that Peter turned feminine being an apostle? He's saying here, I mean, you think he got a soprano voice? You think that he learned to sing the gospel? Oh, baby, oh, I just want you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Oh, 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 you Christian. You can know that even though I'm talking. Stern stuff. I, 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 baby, baby, I just want you to know. Look beyond the way I look. I know it's tight, but it's right. Please, please don't look. Please, please listen to me. Because I, 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 baby, bruh, I, blood, I, cuz, I, 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 I. I, 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 truly love you. <laughs> Beloved, don't be bewildered concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. Concerning the fire trial, which is to try you, reads like this, that a test of fire, don't be surprised that a test of fire is being applied to you. How many know, how many know that, hey, this was written 1900 years ago, but it's still true. How many say, hey, 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 the devil ain't playing. Say, he, he ain't giving you no hot foot. You know, he ain't lighting no match under your feet. He, 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 he. <laughs> he, he got you in the hot seat. I mean, he got he he, he, he trying to light you behind here. Yeah, okay, uh, don't think it strange that the test of fire being applied to you. One said, at the fiery test taking place among you to prove you. Another says, don't be surprised at the fiery ordeal coming among you to put you to the test. Another says, don't be surprised or astonished at the fiery trial that you are passing through to test you. So it's letting you know that these things that are happening, the devil means it for evil. The devil means to discourage you. The devil means for you to say, it don't pay to serve Jesus. The devil means for you to say, 
you ain't getting nowhere paying tithes and offering. The devil means to make you say it don't pay to be a Christian. You get ostracized. You get killed. You get shamed. Uh, you don't have no friends. You have to walk by yourself and people laugh at you and they don't pay to go to church uh, every Sunday and every time the door open just be cool because and they don't pay to be too righteous because the Lord helps those who help himself. These tests that the devil is allowed to put on you are orchestrated and controlled by the Lord. The devil does not change his, his, his vineyard. He does not change what he intends to do. But what the devil intends to do ain't got nothing with what God allows. How many know that the devil does come? He does come to steal. But you can say, oh, no, I got my Holy Ghost gun on you. You ain't getting nothing from me. You came to steal my joy. You ain't getting it. Speak to the hand. I don't know why y'all think, ah, eh, yeah. Well, you know, the devil said he come to steal, kill. Jesus said he come to steal, kill, and destroy. Oh, let, come on here. Come on here. You ain't getting nothing here. Bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it on. I am equipped with the armor. I'm equipped to fight. I got on Holy Ghost box. Come on, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. You come to kick butt, guess who butt gonna get kicked? You came to discourage me, guess who gonna be discouraged? You came to set me on fire, guess who gonna have to go to hell? You came to make me go back, guess who gonna go back? I ain't backing up off of nothing. If anybody, you came to make me retreat, guess who gonna retreat? You need to tell that I know you came. He warned me that you would come to steal, kill, and destroy. But I got news for you. That's why he told us to put on the whole armor of God and look for the unexpected. Expect the unexpected. Now, my man, make up your mind. Now, some people are crazy enough to go talk about don't say danger. And don't say, let's pray that the road will be safe. And don't talk about if, you know, if, if tomorrow comes. Uh, don't, you, you just confess. Let me, you better be ready to say, tomorrow, by the help of the Lord, I'm going to do. And expect the devil not to want you to do it. His name means adversary. His name means an enemy. You don't think, he, you, you think his name means Cupid? Do you think because they put on it that his name means cutie pie? Do you think his name means sweetie pie? Do you think he comes to bring you pies and ice cream and cake? Oh, if he, if he brings you ice cream and cake and something delicious and, and precious and looking good, you better be careful. Because when he get through with it, when he get through with it, when he get through with dressing up that stuff and making it look like it's good and ain't no good, when the, you know the devil has done it, then you know you're in trouble. The Lord, even when he, as a heavenly father, chastises us, God does not whip us or punish us just to beat our butt. He uses it to discipline, to train us. Some of us, he had to hit us pretty hard. If you would just let the Lord, he would just rebuke you. Excuse me. If you would let the Lord, he would just reprove you. He would just correct you. He would just talk to you. If you would let the Lord, that's what the Holy Ghost, your buddy, is for. The Holy Ghost would tell you, don't do that. In a, in, in a, in a non-verbal voice, in your mind, real sweetly and real softly, he, the Holy Ghost, will say, don't. He ain't going to never holler, don't. Quicker than you can think to say a curse word or to tell them off or to read them, the Holy Ghost will say, fast and nana sings it, don't say that. If you would listen to the Lord correcting you, you wouldn't have to be graduating to rebuke. And then if you get rebuked, you know, we don't like to get rebuked. Well, he could have said it better than that. <sighs> I don't understand why he got, see, rebuke is sharp reproof. Rebuke is uh, hollering at you and when you correct you rebuke is being upset I don't understand why people don't understand that we love you so much 
that we know that some of y'all, the reason that you're at the stage is because you got mule in you. Uh, you got hippo in you. Uh, you got toughness in you. Uh, you need to be humble. You, you, you don't hear nothing. You're hard to hear. I, I ain't going to talk about you. How many know, not your children, how many know that some children, if you don't holler, they'll never hear? They, how many know that? I mean, they're looking at the TV, and you can stand in the kitchen and say, you bug. Come in and wash these dishes. You bug. You bug. Huh? How many know that some of us in the spirit? I can't understand how some people talk about, I don't like to be hollered at. The only way you do anything in school is a teacher come in what you call mean. That the teacher come in called tough. You do not have no army sergeant or no marine sergeant or no navy boatswain mate or trainer or in the wax or the way. Then women, women coaches on the basketball team, women that coach or men everywhere in the ways or the whack. Feminine cute little parties coming in. I want to be in the military. The only way you can run a military is to have somebody get up in your face and holler at you. Y'all don't hear me and hurt your feelings and dare you to cry and dare you to mope and dare you to quit and make you do 50 just for not looking good. Am I right? That's why we can put a thousand Marines in Afghanistan and know I don't care what them Afghanistan look at and they know I have been trained not to retreat. You can curse me. You can curse my God. You can talk about my mama. But if you don't get out of the way, if you don't stop shooting at me, we're going to kill you and keep on stepping. Trained. So you might have realized that you've got to fight. Now, let me go on with this, you know, you know what I mean? He says, concerning the fire trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. As though, you know what just happened to me? As though there were some abnormal experience. As though some foreign thing fit befell you. You ask the Lord, I don't know why. I, 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 I. You never ask the Lord, I don't know why. That sister so-and-so, I know she living right. I don't know why she had to cry. It's always, I don't know why I have to cry. It's never why. I don't understand. It's good that she's serving the Lord why that he lost his job. But it's, I don't know why. I lost my job. Uh, uh, you never, never asked the Lord, uh, I don't understand you know, why that the Lord took her mother or her daddy, but when it's up, uh, God, you did me wrong. We have too much eye, and we act like that when he talks to us, when trouble comes down the pipe, I want to know from you. And I'm telling you right now, when you come to God that way, he is not going to give an answer. If he would give an answer, the answer would be, why not you? Who do you think you are? A little bit later on, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to the same thing. Okay. But he said, this is what you're supposed to do. It does not seem humanly possible. Verse 13. What did they say? But rejoice. Come on, somebody. Rejoice. Clap your hands. It says, rejoice. Put a smile on your face. Rejoice. I'm going through. I don't care what others do. I have been told it is command. Rejoice. It comes from the word joy. And rejoice, the R-E means over and over and over again. Keep on rejoicing. Keep on expressing joy. Because something is happening to me. Something is happening for me. Something is happening through me. God is doing something to me. God is using me. God is fixing me up to get the blessing. I have to pay for these blessings. So let me just stop here. Here, James and John. Now it's significant that Peter would write this here because it was read in your hearing in the gospel that James and John, you no, know, the big three, 
I mean, no Bible, to the big three. There were three that saw Jesus with Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration. The other nine didn't see him, didn't go up on the mountain. Three went in, the big three, Peter, James, and John, when he spoke to Jairus' daughter and said, get up. Only three went in there. The others didn't see Jairus' daughter raised from the dead. Uh, now, uh, James and John had a few years back, probably maybe about 20 or 25 years back, uh, they put their mama up to it. Uh, mama, you know Jesus like you because uh, you marry his mother's friend. You know, Mary, the mother of Jesus, needed a friend because they talked about crazy Mary who claimed that she had this here child when she was a virgin. And she was so crazy and stupid, and then she married a stupid man by the name of Joe. That old man believed that when he married her anyway. She come and thought she pregnant, and she hadn't been with no man, and that fool married her. Both of them crazy, and they got a crazy child. So Mary needed a friend. And so mother of James and John, Mama, I, 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 we, now you know them boys put us at Mama, uh, you ever talk to Jesus? Mm -hmm. the, yes or no? I just sit down and talk to Jesus and say, I want you to ask him something. Why don't you ask him? Well, he, 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 you, know, you know how Jesus is. He ain't sweet all the time. You know, he hard on us men. He hard on us disciples. He will holler at us. Be go strong. And James and John, their, son, their name, nickname was Sons of Thunder. But they scared to ask Am I relating it? But we scared to ask sweet Jesus because Jesus will get on you. Jesus will frown at you. Jesus will holler at you. Jesus will rebuke you. Mama, I don't know. You know last time we asked Jesus something, he got on us and said, y'all need to humble yourself. He always getting on us. He called us fools. Yes, he called them foolish one time. He said, where is your faith? Jesus will always rebuke you and say, oh, you slow of heart. That means... You know, LLD or something like that. You know, uh, you know, um, in, uh, he, 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 man, ask him this. Uh, can we be your chief lieutenant? General Jesus, uh, when you finish conquering, when God gives you the Jewish empire and you become and you put down Pilate and the Roman Empire and, and, and all them boys are, Pilate and, and, and Herod, when you become king and you lead us to be the top boys, can one of my children be a uh, three-star general and the other be two-star general? Now, you, I, I, I'll let you decide. Now, I don't know which one's going to be on the right and which we're going to let, but I got two sons. I'll be sad if I know they both can't be the same rank, but can you just put one just as long as this one is your next, whatever you call them. Just as long as they you know they got the highest rank, and this and he can take the. Now I mean, I let this out. And Jesus said, He turned to the fellas. He said, Now I know y'all put your mama up to this. He said, Now let me tell you something. I'm talking about expect the unexpected. He said, Okay, you do have a special position. You are in training. You have peeped your whole card. You know from the fact that you were the only two, along with Peter, that went in and saw the first dead being raised. And you gone on the Mount Trans, you realize that there's something perking for you. But I want you to understand this. You are going to be somebody. But are you ready? That same way, the way that I'm going to be lifted up, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. If I be stretched wide and hung high, if I have nails pierced in my hand, if I have nails put in my feet, if I hang there stripped naked, if be lifted up on the cross on Calvary. If I 
bleed and die if I be tried and persecuted, if I be mocked at, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men under me. And I need an army, and you are special soldiers, but the same thing, that the same cup of dirt that I drink, I'm going to drink. It's not going to be pretty wine. It's not going to be champagne. I've got to drink a dirty cup. I've got to go through dirt. I've got to go through shame. I've got to go through blame. I've got to be mocked. I've got to be scorned. I already have come into the world, and they don't receive me. He said, now the same thing that I am baptized with. Notice he didn't say sprinkle with. It's one thing for, you to, for me to sprinkle a little water, and another thing for me to go get a fire hose and wet you all up. It's one thing to wet you all up and then lay you down and put you and duck you under the water and hold you there and say, if you can't hold your breath, you're going to, he said, you're going to be baptized. And it didn't mean that you're going to be dipped in there and they're going to pull you out. You're going to put the devil, they're going to be allowed to put you under the fire, under the water, under persecution, and he's going to put his foot on you and hold you there. And you're going to have to hold your breath and say, God! And you, some of them might have to say, if I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. If I perish, let me perish. But what you're going to have to do, some of you have to come to the conclusion like Job said, when I'm through with this, when the time is up, the devil only, he's not in charge of 19, uh, 2001. The devil is not in charge of 2002. The devil is not in charge of rolling the sun out. The devil is not in charge of your life. The devil is not in charge of when you're going to die. The devil just tries. I want you to realize that some of the things you're going through, I, I, I really am surprised and hurt about people. Now, I know. But with all this here healing, let me say this. I don't understand why you don't let your faith grow. Uh, everything, I ain't got people that stay out of the church, the least little headache, the least little threatening, uh, the least little body ache. Now, I had somebody, I was uh, the other night, what was that? I was you know, last Sunday night. I didn't get here too late because I had some things to take care of. But a deacon came running, I was that. I trying to get back down to the church. I had some things there to take care of. And I heard the doorbell ring, and a deacon was standing there. And he said, he said I just spoke to mom, but she told me you was down to the house. She said, pray for me right now. My blood is up. I'm seeing the red. I didn't, and I, I, when I opened the door, I knew someone put my hand and prayed for her, and I felt it jump off. I said, how do you feel? He knew that his blood was up. He didn't, yeah, oh, call the ambulance. Oh, where am I? <clears throat> he went to the source of healing. I'm trying to get you to see that the Lord is trying to let you find out for yourself. He'll be a way maker. He will put the fire out. He will keep you from being drowned. How many know that you need to be able to testify, I don't care what comes up. I can make it. I, why just saying so? I can make it as long as you ain't nothing happening. Then soon as something come up, you forget about I can make it. You forget about you need to learn to make it with how you get to crying. That's why the Bible said, I'm, I'm trying to be through. One writer said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. The Bible says that Job Received twice as much as he had at first. You don't get it from the first chapter. You don't get it from the second chapter. You don't got to read through about 20 chapters to see the end result was not that Job lost everything. You know, most people when I ask, do you know what happened to Job? I guess he died. Well, he did. <laughs> at age of 200 or something. But I said, well, do you know how he died? I guess he died poor. I read, you know, he lost everything. I guess he went to his grave, you know, 100 and some years later, you know, and with nothing, he learned to be content. I, but Job went to his grave having twice as much. He lost 7,000 sheep. Before he went to his grave, he had 14,000 sheep. 
he had he lost in one I mean like that in one in less than 24 hours in less than 12 hours before the sun went down person the person said all your cattle dead 500 she asses they gone uh, people came down, lightning did this, and then the final thing was all your children, your pretty daughters and your seven sons that you've been praying, Lord, I know they're drinking wine, sporty odor, and I know they're cursing and, and looking at the TV and ain't going to church and ain't going to the synagogue. Oh, God, I've been praying, let them live, and hear the message is, I'm your child, I know my, and hear the message, all of them dead. Wasn't on no airplane, all of them dead. The Bible ends in chapter 1. The first thing that happened was he lost everything he had, including his children. And it said that Job did not curse God. And then the devil came in chapter 2 and said, Ah, you tricked me. Uh, what you need to do, give me some more rope. You, you told me you're letting the heads down. I got everything you own, but he still is not, not only not cursing you, he is not charging you foolishly. I need one more thing. Everything that a man has will he give in exchange for his life. Now, how many know the world, how many know that the world will tell you everybody got a price? How many been told that? How many when they're after you, boy or girl, man or woman, married or not, they, some people think they can put enough pressure on you so they say iron or milk. Come on here, come on here. Miss Iron Pants, that's why I'm going to keep on after you because I'm going to get that thing called iron or milk. You know, mm -hmm. They think they're hot enough to, you know, how I, I don't, let's, talk, let's get real in here. You know, make it my world. I don't care if you're mad, they'll try you. They don't want you, they just try it. They don't want to be, if you're a church person, they don't want to be here to say, I told y'all preachers, like, how many know that? Leave you stand up in the, leave you stand up in the hotel with a sack over your head laughing and telling everybody about you. They'll tell you that lie. It's just between us. We're going to be a fool if you want to. Next thing you know, your name will be all over the page, amen, all over the newspaper, amen. But he said, I just need to be able to touch his body. And I'm closing on that night. The final test was, the final test was when the devil was allowed. But the order had already gone out. What did the Lord tell the devil? You can put sickness, killing sickness, on all over his body. But what? You can't kill him. You can't kill him. I will not relinquish the hand of life and death. To you, no time. So that ought to make you secure. I don't care what you're going through. I want you to know that one test will be maybe your money. Another test will be your honey. The devil will threaten you. The devil will do more than threaten. The Lord was in control of the wind. The Lord is the one that made the wind blow. It made the lightning flash. The Bible says that the fire of God, and is it the fire?